So the guard pass system I'm gonna show is in my opinion, one of the most versatile and powerful guard pass positions in Jiu Jitsu. You can pass super flexible guards with it. You can set it up from almost anywhere. It's super useful. I call it the lunging leg drag. So first I'm gonna go through some of the basic core principles of doing a leg drag, and then I'm gonna go to how you can set this up and use it in a lot of different situations. All right, so we're gonna start off looking at the leg drag mechanics to start. So once we're in a leg drag, the main most important detail is to keep this leg pinned with our shin. A lot of people shoot their knee all the way through and they focus on the leg and all this stuff. But if you ever allow this foot to get good force on the floor, he can start turning back in. And if he's really strong, he can start fighting and creating movement, right? So as long as this knee or shin stays right above his knee line and keeps him pinned here, he can't turn back. Even if I'm not using my hands like to hold the leg or the hips, he can't really create good movement here. This completely restricts him. That's the main premise of this position. All the other series are gonna build from here. The first thing we do here is I lock him with the, the uh, leg. Often my left hand will grab the hip here. My right hand will come up to the lapel. If this knee is here, right here, I can even get my elbow over and start pushing it behind. Once I get past, Often, since he can't turn back in, he'll start pushing with this top leg a lot more, extending it to try to get me out, and that exposes the hip and allows me to come in and pass. Okay, so the next finish variation from the leg drag is once we have the leg pinned, we've gotten to the lapel and we're trying to finish here, there's no way for him to shrimp and turn back into me, but some guys who are really flexible and have good guards, what they'll start to do is I'm gonna keep the hand on the hip initially and pull it to keep him here, but he starts pulling his knees to his chest here and centering up back like this, right? The more flexible the guy's guard is, the easier it is for them to try to do this. So what happens is, instead of me being able to keep this down on the floor, which he can't turn back with the foot, so he brings his core tight and it's gonna look something like this, right? So now here, I'm gonna keep the lapel, and what I do is I, I post on my head and his hip comes off the floor. From here, I can grab his hip and I can start rolling through for a back take from here. From here, I can drop through and I wanna keep my torso under his low back or my chest under the low back because now he can't bring his back to the floor. From here, there's different finish variations. I can switch this into a twister hook. I can be here and just throw this top leg over and set him up, but it's a very powerful combination to mix in with the leg drag is the roll through for the back take. So now we're gonna look at using the rolling back take from the leg drag position. So we're in the leg drag, we got the leg pinned here like this and I have him pinned. And what's often gonna happen here is this is pinned and I can have different grips here. Often my left hand will be on the hip here and I'm pushing this knee out of the way. Once I get this out of the way, I wanna progress to the lapel and he's gonna start pulling his knees to his chest. And what happens is he can't frame on the floor with the foot, but if, they're, if they got a flexible tough guard, they'll start pulling this in, right? And what that does is it starts to lift his low back off the floor, which is gonna make rolling through to threaten the back take much easier. So I have the lapel here. He pulls the knees to the chest and I'm gonna start posting my head on the floor, I'm doing this very slowly to demo, and I'm gonna keep this hip to elevate his hip, and now I'm gonna roll through and keep his hip elevated here. As long as I can keep his hip elevated in the air, I can bring my head and my chest under his low back and now he's propped up in the air. From here, there's a lot of different finish variations you can do. I could just throw my top leg over and sit him up here and come up and take the back. I could also turn this into a twister hook type finish here and kick up and take the back here. Right? I could even use this to go to like kind of a stomp type finish here and progress up and take the back. But if you can force that position where you have your top hand on the hip and your right arm under the low back, it's a really powerful point. You can finish the guard pass. So one more finish variation from here. Again, we come in, we get the bottom leg pinned. We chase that at all costs. He's gonna start pulling his knees to his chest, right? And now it's gonna end up how, uh, if the guy's hyper flexible, which I'm, he's being a great partner to help me with this, but it's uh, not his best position to be st uh, stuck in. So here I can, uh, he, it turns into a full stack. Now from here, I, again, I wanna keep my knee pressure on this leg so that if he came back down out of this, we still end up in that same leg drag type position. But now he's forced himself into the full stack. And here, there's two ways he can go. If he comes back this way, he comes into the full leg drag. If he goes the other way, we're gonna do another type of dropping back take. So now his weight is, is a little bit more that side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this left foot in, right? And now I just grab the back of his hip, I drop here, and now I can throw this foot over to sit him up for a back take. There's this principle when you're doing like any form of crab ride back take, I just call it lapping, which is basically, if you imagine we're here, this is like a crab ride, right? If I throw my top foot over here and try to take his back, if I come up, he's gonna get half guard by turning back into me. If 
when I bring him down, he's sitting on my thigh. You see how my left thigh here, he's on it there. If I throw my top leg over here and I do this, I sit him up to the back. Now that's true whether or not my, it's just my leg here, whether it's just my leg here. If it's a twister hook, of course, I'm going to get the back anyway, like this, right? If it's here, if it's a crab hook, as long as he's laying on my thigh like this, when this foot comes over here, whatever my hand positions are, when I kick this down, it's going to lift him up and give me the back. So what's happening here is when he's in this stack position, right? We have him up. We came here from the leg drag. He starts to go through a little. Instead of rolling all the way through, I just set this foot in and I drop. And see, I already have him lapped on that bottom thigh. Sit him up and take the back. All right, so now we're gonna start talking about different setups for this. So one of the best setups for this is if your opponent is in a side tilt position, meaning he's leaning on one side, setting up the leg drag is a bit easier. If he's centered, often his arms are on the outside, so pinning it to the floor can be a little bit difficult because his arm is here. You can still do it, I'll show that next. But one of the easiest ones is when he's in this side tilt type situation, right? So if we're here like this, often this leg is down, and I can be moving here, and I'll just really flat, uh, fast, gonna tap this foot across. I can use my cross in it, can use the ankle, you can use the pant leg. You just want to pop this across. And the main thing is a lot of people when they're doing the leg drag, they're focused so much on the leg and this kind of stuff. The guy has time to fight and turn back in, be it pushing off the floor or just lassoing his leg. But when you understand the idea of that knee pin is so critical, you can lunge for it. And that's the idea of why I call it like a lunging leg drag. So when I'm here like this and I'm moving around and I flash this across, I lunge to the knee hitting first. Now, once I land this, even if my hands, and there's a lot of different arm positions you could have, but even if I'm just like this and he starts moving. See, that keeps him pinned. And the more he, ex and this is exactly the response I wanted, right? This is exactly what happens. This is pinned. He thinks he can move it, but he can't. So they start over stretching this. And this is going to open up the hip and make it easy to switch off into a side control finish, right? So if you're caught in this kind of model where you're used to, you're doing your leg drags and you freeze in here, the guy has too much time to work. But if I'm moving around here, no matter what side he's on here, and I lunge in with that shin, you get the position so quick. And if I start to get in, and as soon as I start landing, he starts pulling the knees to the chest. Look, I'm already rolling through and starting to come into the diving back kick type threats. So the next one is doing it from the center position. So when it's from the center position, I do it more like a Toriando as a start. I would say the distinction of the Toriando is a Toriando, I control both legs and I pass to the side, but I go more directly to side control by pinning the hips and coming into knee on belly or side, or I go all the way to north south. Whereas a leg drag, at some point, I come into this pinning position with my shin. So what we're gonna do is a Toriando to a leg drag. So what happens here is we'll be like this. I'm controlling the pants in the center, and now I pop his hips to the side. I try to pin his hips to the floor like this. And now often your opponent will start framing with his hands on my shoulder, exactly. And then I can step my leg in and switch to the pin, right? So, and this is also a great option if your pan, uh, opponent has short pants. Sometimes it's nice to have the pants to do Toriandos, but your opponent will just have like really bad pants and you can't get that. So the ankles are always there, right? You can always move like this. See, and I start to hit here and he pulls his knees tight, boom, like this. And then I lunge in with the knee. And again, now I'm forcing that position. And you see at all costs, I'm not just focusing on anything else other than keeping this pin. Because if I try to be like here, now he starts getting that wiggle room to turn back, right? But you could see as soon as I hit here, he started to move. See, see, I track that look. Now I'm getting chest to chest and I can switch my control up to finish chest to chest. Another really easy way to get into the situation is just from a stack. If my opponent has his legs higher. Sometimes it's hard to Toriando or knee cut because you want to trap a leg so he's got his feet up. Usually flexible guard players will do this. So I hit a quick stack and press up. And as soon as I get this here, I drop the shin in, right? And now from here, I can progress to the passes I showed before when he was stacked. But also as he tries to get back down out of this, again, I keep that knee pin because that's the main thing I want. If he stays up, I can do the rolling back take. So there's other threats I can do from there. I've covered in different stack pass videos, but I'm always chasing that knee position. And again, here now I can progress in, control the hip and pass. So now we're gonna look at doing this from a Baron Bolo setup. So what happens is somehow we're gonna get a knockover from De La Hiva guard. So I knock him over, he falls here. I start to grab his hip and we just initiate some kind of a Baron Bolo sequence. So I start to pull through with whatever Baron Bolo sequence you wanna do. And as I start to go here, I just feel like the Bolo is really hard to do. So I'm gonna switch my inside knee here to this position I often call a failed Bolo. 
and I start to push out here and see I'm already starting to pin his leg towards the floor just with the opposite knee. And what happens is now I'm gonna switch to my top knee coming over here and I continue that pin. And again, the big thing here is a lot of people, they focus on coming up into the position, they don't focus on the knee pinning. So once I'm here and I, I keep this knee pin, see I keep that knee pin and now it's easy to come up and force a leg drag. And of course, if they have a flexible guard, they might already start pulling their knee to their chest and I'm gonna start rolling through. And now I have that same kind of position from before where I can roll through and take the back. So if you guys are interested in some of the back take systems I showed from the roll through with that top hip grip, I have a full entire video on my website under the John Thomas lab. I'll put the link in the description to go there if you wanna check it out as well. And as always, if you guys like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.